Hello and welcome to Lab 3, The Shunting Yard. In this video, we will go over the purpose and background of this lab, how to do this lab, and just a few pointers to help you on your way. Part 1, Purpose and Background. Long before we had planes, we used trains to transport goods from one place to another. When trains needed to be stored, they were docked in a place called a classification yard or shunting yard. Notice in this picture of a shunting yard that each entrance point can admit only one train at a time, and to get to the trains in the back, the trains in the front must first be removed. Well, in 1961, an awesome mathematician and programmer named Edsger Dijkstra published a method for converting between infix notation and reverse Polish or postfix notation for mathematical expressions. Dijkstra's algorithm was named the shunting yard because it operates similar to a railroad classification yard, in that objects are handled using a last-in, first-out method. Part 2, How to do the lab. In this section, we will cover the basic algorithms for using a stack to 1. Determine if an infix expression is balanced. 2. Evaluate a postfix expression. 3. Convert from postfix notation to infix notation. And 4. Convert from infix notation to postfix notation. Determining if an expression is balanced. When determining if an expression is balanced, the only tokens that we need to pay attention to are the parentheses, brackets, and braces. An expression is balanced if each parenthesis, bracket, and brace is matched by a closing parenthesis, bracket, or brace. These two expressions are examples of balanced expressions. Note that each parenthesis has a closing parenthesis to match it, as do the brackets and braces. These expressions, on the other hand, are not balanced. The first expression is missing a closing parenthesis. The second expression has the proper number of braces, brackets, and parentheses, but is mismatched, and the third expression is also missing a closing parenthesis. We can use a stack to determine if an expression is balanced. Basically, we will parse through the string, ignoring all non-parenthesis tokens. When we find a parenthesis, bracket, or brace, if it is an open parenthesis, we put it onto the stack. Note that we will ignore any token that is not a parenthesis, bracket, or brace. When we reach a closing parenthesis, we compare it to the top of the stack. If the top of the stack is a matching parenthesis, we pop the stack and keep going. Otherwise, we know that the expression is not balanced. We continue to parse through the expression in the same manner until we reach the end of the string. When we have reached the end of our expression, if our stack is empty, then we know the expression was balanced. If the stack is not empty, the expression was not balanced. Evaluating a postfix expression. Evaluating a postfix expression is straightforward when using a stack. For this operation, the stack will hold operands, or integers, only. As before, parse through the given string, but this time, when you come to an integer, push it onto the stack. When you come to an operator, check the number of elements in the stack. If there are less than two elements in the stack, the expression is invalid. If there are two or more elements in the stack, Pop the top two elements off of the stack. The top element becomes the right operand, and the bottom element becomes the left operand. Place the operator from your expression between the two and evaluate the expression. The result is then placed back onto the stack. Continue this until the end of the expression is reached. When you have finished parsing the expression, there should be only one element left in the stack. If there is more than one, the expression was invalid. The last element in the stack is the result of the expression. Converting from postfix to infix. Converting from postfix to infix is almost exactly the same as evaluating a postfix expression. The only difference is that instead of evaluating each expression as we go, we concatenate the expressions and place the resulting string onto the stack. As before, place all integers onto the stack. When you read an operator, pop the top two elements of the stack. The top element goes on the right, and the bottom element goes on the left, with the operator in the middle. Now, instead of evaluating the expression, simply place parentheses on either side of the expression and place the entire string back on the stack. Continue as before. The expression left on the stack when you reach the end of the string is the result. Converting from infix to postfix. Converting from an infix expression to a postfix expression is a little bit more complicated than converting from postfix to infix. 
Before we begin, I want to define precedence for operators and parentheses. This will be important in the conversion process. There are many ways to define precedence for operators and parentheses, but this is the most straightforward way that I know. We say that any closing parenthesis has a priority of 3, or immediate priority. When we come to a closing parenthesis in our expression, we will consider that closing parenthesis more important than any other operator or parenthesis. We say that any multiply, divide, or mod operator has a priority of 2, or high precedence. These operators are more important than the low precedence operators. We say that any plus or minus operator has a priority of 1, or low precedence. These operators are the least important operators. We say that any opening parenthesis has a priority of 0 or wild precedence. These parentheses can always be placed on the stack, but any other operator can be placed on top of an opening parenthesis. They're kind of like a stack reset. To convert the expression, we parse through the string as before. When we come to an integer, we automatically add it to the output string. When we come to an operator, we must compare that operator's precedence with the precedence of the operator on the top of the stack. If the precedence of the operator is 1, we can only place it on an empty stack or a stack with a precedence of 0, which would be a stack with an opening parenthesis on the top. If the precedence of the operator is 0, we always place it on the stack. If the precedence of the operator is 2, we can only place it on the stack if the stack is empty or if the top element of the stack has a precedence of 0 or 1. You cannot place it on the stack if the top precedence is 2. In this case, the top element of the stack has a precedence of 0, so we can place it on top. When we come to an operator that has equal or lower precedence than the operator on the top of the stack, we pop from the stack and to the output until we can place the operator on the stack. We then push the operator onto the stack. When we come to a closing parenthesis, which has a priority of 3, we immediately pop from the stack to the output until we find a matching opening parenthesis. When we find the matching parenthesis, we pop it off the top of the stack and continue parsing the expression, but we do not add it to the output. When we come to an operator with precedence equal to the precedence of the stack, we pop from the stack until we can add the operator. When we reach the end of the string, we pop all remaining elements off of the stack and into the output. The result of our operation is the string that remains in the output. Part 3. Tips and Tricks These are just a few good ideas to help you out with the lab. 1. Use local stacks. Declare your stacks inside each function rather than as data members of your class. This will help you keep your stacks clear between function calls. 2. Check your stack size before calling top or pop. Calling top or pop on an empty stack will cause a segmentation fault every time. 3. Use a string stream to convert between integers and strings. You will need to do this often, especially when evaluating a function. 4. Remember to keep an eye on the white space that you return in strings. A common error is for students to return an expression with an extra space at the end. 5. Use helper functions. You may find that having a is left paren, is right paren, is pair, is operator, is number, and precedence function will help you to keep your code clean and readable. That's all for this lab. If you have any questions, you can always come in and talk to the TAs. The algorithms for this lab are outlined very clearly in your book as well if you would like more review on how to implement this lab.